Hi guys, so I'm here in Boise, Idaho today. I'm at the Old State Penitentiary. Um, basically, this is just an old prison. It had about 13,000 inmates in it from 1872 to 1973. I wanted to bring you guys along with me to check out this old prison. A lot of people say that this prison is actually haunted. It was on the TV series Ghost Adventures if you have ever seen that TV show. I personally felt a little creeped out when I was going through uh, the maximum security unit, death row unit. There was a lot of creepy places in this tour. So you guys will see this as the video continues. It's a little bit creepy just knowing that there were prisoners here for 101 years. Uh, the stories behind a lot of these prisoners are so interesting. They're kind of disturbing. So not for the faint of heart if you guys, you know, have a weak stomach. This building right here that we're coming up to was an old chapel. In 1971, there was an electrical fire and that actually sparked a riot. All of the prisoners basically just um, fought all of the guards. A lot of them escaped during that fire. So lots and lots of history here. Um, not a lot of buildings remain actually that you can actually go inside and see. There's probably 15, maybe 10 to 15 buildings that you can actually still go inside. This maximum security building was super, super creepy actually. I felt really uncomfortable just walking through it. And look at those shanks, you guys. Like look at the shanks that were made. I can't even believe that they still have a lot of these items from the prisoners. So yeah, so just such an interesting place to go to. I'm really not into gory, um, haunted, scary stuff, but this particular prison was just super, super interesting. And it kind of just gives you the feels when you're inside. You just look at all of the, you know, the prison cells and you can just imagine the kind of, kinds of things that went on um, in here for the 101 years that it again was open. All of those items inside those cells too, those are items from actual prisoners that were here back um, back in the day before the prison closed. So, you know, a lot of those items, some of them are like homemade and yeah, you can just imagine just people living in this prison. This was the guard access basically um, just to take care of all of the plumbing issues that you would have in a prison. A lot of prisoners would flush things down the toilets um, to either cause plumbing problems if they were, you know, trying to, um, you know, again, I mean, look at all those shanks. Obviously there was some, some problems with the prisoners, um, being in there. So yeah, that obvious, obviously there were some plumbing issues. Um, but yeah, crazy, crazy amount of shanks that, that was one thing that really disturbed me was just the amaze. I was just so amazed by the, the objects that the prisoners were able to create with the limited resources that they had. You wouldn't expect somebody to have access to a knife, but somehow these prisoners were gaining access to these things and we still have them on display here. When looking in these cells, you guys, these cells are for four people to live in at a time, four different people in every single cell. I, I don't know about you, but I mean, that, that just seems so insane that there were four people in every single cell. I don't, I, I don't think I would actually make it. Um, this is nothing though compared to the women's cells. We're gonna get to that in a little bit during this video. Um, oh, this one is really super interesting. So this is a barber cell. Um, evidently there was, a, you know, always a prisoner who was a barber who would take care of everyone's haircuts. And that's basically where they would live and stay. And then if you were, you know, a maximum security, you know, prisoner and you had to get a haircut, that's where you would go. They weren't even allowed inside the normal um, barber, I guess, normal barber shop that everybody else was allowed in. That toilet said Idaho pot, which I thought was funny. And yeah, again, more homemade items. I mean, look, look at all of those items, you guys. And these are left behind from prisoners that were here in the 70s. This is a dumbwaiter. When you were on death row, they would bring your last meal up through that uh, dumbwaiter. So kind of creepy, again, just super, super creepy. This room in particular, when I was walking through it, I could hear my own footsteps. And I don't know why, but it just, just creeped me out so, so much. And then just thinking about death row and the people who were here, it just, so, so creepy. This one cell that we're coming up to on the very end, this was Raymond Snowden cell. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Raymond Snowden, but he was called Idaho's Jack the Ripper. He basically murdered his lover, Cora Dean, um, and ended up in prison for it. He was actually the last person in this prison to be hanged. So a lot of, lot of, you know, really interesting history there. Um, again, I'm not super big into murderers, uh, but this did kind of, you know, spark my interest just seeing all of the, um, 
basically, you know, all of the, the inside of this prison. This was the old dining hall. Again, just going back to that fire, this dining hall got completely burnt down. I mean, look, look at that, you guys. <laughs> There's nothing left of it. Um, it's basically just, you know, the foundation of that dining hall. It's amazing to me how large the dining hall actually was, though, when you look at it. it, it I mean, you could even imagine thousands of prisoners being in there. Laundry, okay, you guys, when, when you go into this laundry room, I don't know how to describe the smell, but it smells like oil and dust. Like you can almost smell the machinery, which is kind of, I don't know, it was so, again, like so creepy and just kind of gross, but so interesting at the same time. These are old dryers that they used to use in the prison. Those were so interesting as well, because a, a lot of this machinery, they said, still worked to this day. If they, um, if they started using it, you could still actually clean your clothes. Oh, this, this was just, I just couldn't even believe this. This was actually super funny, but they would hang mismatched socks on that post or that, that pole there. So the prisoners, if they only came out with like one sock from the dryer, they'd have to go back and like find their missing sock. Um, again, more machinery. And I, I don't even know how to describe this, but it just smelled in this room. It just had like this weird odor. Oh gosh. And th this was the witness room. This is so creepy because this is where somebody would actually stand to watch the prisoners be executed because you had to have a witness and they would actually watch the person being hanged at the gallows and it's hanged because clothes are hung, people are hanged. Just if anybody's going to correct me on that, it's hanged. Yeah. And then death penalty that just, ugh, so again, like so creepy. Thankfully there's so few prisons. I don't even know if we actually have a prison still in the United States today that still um, hangs people. I think we only do a lethal injection now. But it's still just so creepy to think that even back in the 70s, they were still hanging people. And then this was um, out there. There was a basketball court that they would go and play basketball on. You guys, this was the these were the women's cells. Look how tiny those are, you guys. Even the solitary um, confinement cells for the men were larger than the women's cells. And it, when you look in that cell, you would think that that would only be for one person. You guys, that was for two women. To be in that cell and they, they weren't even given sinks like the men were in their their prison cells so totally not fair not equal at all um the reason why the doors are different i guess was to provide some sort of like modesty for female prisoners when they were using the restroom so the male guards couldn't see through the doors but you know obviously there's a hole in the door so i don't know how that really provides that much privacy i would honestly i i would hate having a door like that where I, I wasn't able to like see out of it and I'm trapped in a tiny room with another person I just I couldn't even imagine that the women too their number one crime was forgery you guys forgery isn't that bad like for, forging a check I'm sorry but if I was in here for a year because I forged a check I just I wouldn't even be able to contemplate you know getting that kind of a sentence for such a petty crime. Like, I don't, I don't consider that to be a crime worth living in this jail cell for a year. And the fact that they had, you know, not even a fraction of the space that the men did in their cells, it, it honestly just kind of like pissed me off to think about, you know, women who were put in these prisons that, you know, basically, I mean, what, they're doing petty crimes and then they're getting locked away. This was a, this again, this was so sad, but this was a picture um, so this was where the women would eat. They had a kitchen in their like area that they would eat in, but there was pictures of these women in this area. That's what it used to look like. Um, which is so, it's just ironic that they would actually put a kitchen, you know, where prisoners are the, the men, I don't believe they got a kitchen. So, you know, the fact that they have like a kitchen in this area is just ridiculous, but um, yeah, that tiny little area is where they would all eat. I imagine they didn't have as many women, but still. Yeah, the prison system in general in the United States has just changed so rapidly over the past hundred years. So super interesting stuff. 